South America, one million years ago. From a distance, the world looks quite similar to our modern one. It was only two million years ago before this time that North America and South America collided, allowing many species to expand into new areas, both North and South. Slowly the ecosystems have changed, though one South American creature still soldiers on, refusing to give in to the newcomers. Megatherium. Six meters long and four tons, the only creatures on the planet larger than them are the mammoths. It is hard to believe that the closest living relative to these bear-like giants are tree sloths. They are mostly herbivorous, but they are so large and powerfully built that adults have no predators at all. They feed on tall plants, and unlike their modern relatives, are very dangerous. A female moves along the edge of her forest home. Out on the plains are a herd of Glyptodon, massive relatives of armadillos, and beyond them, a pack of top predators. Smilodon, the largest saber-toothed cat to ever exist. This pack has taken down some form of herbivore, but unfortunately, they aren't left alone to eat it. Slowly walking up to them is a male megatherium, looking to take a small amount of meat from the kill. The Smilodon bare their teeth and growl at the intruder, but the Megatherium walks right up to them, and when it gets too close, the cats bolt away. A wise move. One swing of the Megatherium's enormous claws could kill a Smilodon in one strike. They'll have to wait for him to finish before returning to the kill. The female moves on. She has spent the majority of the day eating, and now will rest for the entire night. She finds shelter in a cave, but not a natural one. These small caves have been dug out by the Megatherium themselves, using their large claws to tunnel into the hard surface and excavate a sleeping area. Some of them are over 200 meters long, but the female's one is newer and only 20 meters deep. There is, however, a stranger in her burrow, however. Standing nearly three meters tall on long, powerful legs is a terror bird. These used to be top predators, however they have mostly been reduced to scavengers. The large bird had to duck in order to get into the tunnel, and was likely looking for food, but as soon as he sees the massive female megatherium at the entrance, begins to shriek in surprise. The female is more annoyed than angry, and certainly not afraid of the terror bird, who is now stamping the ground and flapping his small wings. The female sighs, and reverses out of the cave, a movement that she is not used to making. Once the entrance is clear, the terrified terror bird scurries to escape, and as soon as he can stand to his full height, breaks into a full sprint, vanishing into the thick jungle. Having scared off the intruder, the female crawls into her home and lays down to sleep. She needs to rest now more than ever. She is pregnant, and will soon give birth to a single cub. That is why she let the terror bird go, even though she knew she could kill it easily. She doesn't want to risk her unborn young. In just a few more days, she will give birth, and begin the long process of rearing a young megatherium. The giant ground sloths were very successful, and some even took a foothold in North America. However, their numbers have been slowly decreasing, and the last of them will die out around 12,000 years ago, along with many of the world's megafauna. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today we will be breaking down a sloth. Yes, you heard me. It's a humongous sloth named Megatherium. Megatherium is an extinct species of ground sloth that lived between 3.5 million years ago and around 12,000 years ago. There are six species of ground sloth, with Megatherium potentially being the largest. It weighed up to four tons, measured six meters long, and when standing upright could have gotten up to 3.5 meters tall, making it one of the largest animals on the planet at the time. They were also very robust and strong, and above a certain size had no natural predators. Their tail was broad and muscular, 
and when they stood on their hind legs, they used it as a sort of tripod, allowing them to remain standing and even walk upright for short periods. This is so that they could reach high leaves and fruits that were out of reach of other animals. The mouth was narrow and cone-shaped, and they likely had prehensile lips, so they were probably picky eaters, and using their flexible lips, were able to pick out the best leaves and fruits from trees. On their front limbs they had long claws. These would have been used for moving branches in order to feed, or even to defend themselves. However, they were so large that they would have had to walk on their knuckles. Now, a lot of art depicts Megatherium covered in fur. However, given its size and the rather hot environment it lived in, it's more likely it was mostly hairless, like other large herbivores like elephants and rhinos. So, kind of like a naked bear cross cat. Enjoy getting that image out of your head. They likely lived in groups, but may have slept singularly in caves. How do we know this? Well, we found the dugout remains of such caves or burrows. It's still debated whether it was ground sloths or giant armadillos that made them, but it seems more likely that the giant sloths carved out these tunnels. Now, as I said in the narrative part of the video, Megatherium and its relatives did face competition from new species when North and South America joined three million years ago. However, they stayed strong for a long time, and may have even lasted up to 10,000 years ago. However, the constant changes in climate from the Ice Ages, and more importantly, the arrival of humans, pushed them over the edge. There is evidence of hunting and even butchering of ground sloths by ancient humans. There is a lot of debate about whether Megatherium ate meat. I don't think this is too much of a stretch, however. Many modern herbivores chew on bones or even eat them, because their regular food doesn't have the minerals that they require. Deer have been seen to snatch baby birds out of nests and eat them. There's even footage of a tortoise catching and eating a small bird. So for a giant mammal like Megatherium, it seems logical that it may have on occasion chewed on some bones or even scavenged on a carcass to supplement its diet. And since it was so large, there wouldn't be any predator that could stop it though I doubt it pursued prey. Similar to their modern relatives, they were quite slow. Actually, it feels a little unfair to simply call these animals ground sloths. Sure, they are relatively closely related, but we don't call an anaconda the giant non-poisonous viper, just because the two are snakes. Bit of an odd comparison, but still, let's give Megatherium its proper respect. From here on out, viewers, we will refer to it by its proper name. Megatherium, the Great Beast. So what do you think of this South American megafauna? And which lesser known animal would you like me to cover in a future episode? Until then, thank you for watching.